Welcome back to the race. Some districts are reconsidering their use of school resource officers. Alexa Liako spoke to a decision maker whose past with those officers helped shape her push for change. I wish they would have recognized that he was having trouble. Heidi Larson never imagined her son with special needs would have such big problems with police in school. When they couldn't handle him or, or couldn't deal with him, they sent him to the security officer. Larson says Jack was in kindergarten when he began coming home from school unhappy. He would say, I'm a bad kid. I'm a bad kid. You should get rid of me. And he was five and six. As they waited to get him into a special needs class, one day Heidi got called to school to pick her son up. I walked in and he was across the classroom from me by the windows being held by two officers, by his feet, by his arms, and he was writhing in the air in between them. A sight she can't erase from her mind. I can talk about it now without crying, but I couldn't for a long time. Which is why Heidi is looking forward to the Denver Public Schools plan to remove school resource officers from schools. While we leaned on the SROs for some ideals of safety. In the meantime, our students were getting ticketed and arrested um, at very high rates, and particularly our students of color. Another um, category of students who are often um, handcuffed, if not ticketed or arrested, are students with special needs. School Board Vice President Jennifer Bacon says changing that reality looks like mental health um, support in buildings, social workers, counselors, that also looks like academic counselors. Right now, there are 18 Denver police officers working as SROs in Denver public schools. The board voted to take that number down by 25% by the end of this year, and by the end of next school year, there will no longer be a permanent police presence in Denver schools. It's not lost on us the work that we have to do around safety, but safety is also culture. I think there is a positive way to approach and support kids that doesn't have to be with the threat of law. Bacon says her own experience with law enforcement in school shaped her vision for the future. When people saw my skin color or heard what school I went to, they had an assumption about me. And part of that was reinforced by having police officers in my school and not having police officers in schools that were predominantly white. That emotional impact, something Bacon hopes will be erased for students like Jack. To the extent that little schools can do something about telling them that their lives matter, about telling them that when you're hungry or in crisis or you don't know what to do doesn't be, mean you'll be met with handcuffs is incredibly powerful. It does take time to find the right solution, but it's possible. For The Race, I'm Alexa Liako. Thanks for joining us for our conversation on policing in America. Next week, we're looking at how the pandemic is changing travel and tourism in the height of the summer. Until then, from Eugene, Oregon, I'm Chris Stewart, and this is The Race.